let's get underway. Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm very, very, very excited for today's episode of Logic Live. And uh, we are super excited to welcome a new sponsor to Logic Live, and that is AJA. AJA develops an extensive range of solutions for the professional video and audio market, from conversion devices to IO solutions, digital recorders, cameras, and more. The team at AJA is a real friend to the Logic community, sponsoring prizes for One Frame of White and the famous NAB parties. They make the best gear out there, so if you're looking for anything in the IO market, be sure to get it from AJA. AJA, and I swear this is the copy that they sent me. We can't fix the text module, but if you need video IO, we've got you covered. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Losey. We love you, man. And Logic Live is also brought to you by Synesis Oceana, solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. These guys are my personal uh, reseller. I've been working with them for 15 years, could not do my job without them, and uh, they've always been big supporters of the Flame community. Check out everything they have to offer at Synesis.io, Synesis Oceana, supporting Flame artists since 1997. <laughs> my guest today is Stefan Labrie. Stefan is a senior product owner at Autodesk, uh, a title that I will ask him to describe for us later. Stefan is the caretaker for the parts of Flame that we interact with every day, project management, conforming, archiving, caching, and third-party integrations, just to name a few. He's a brilliant and extremely funny guy whose passion for Flame and its users are at the core of all that he does. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the lovely and the talented Stefan Labrie. Stefan, are you there? Hello, Andy. How are you? Hello, hello. Live from uh, sunny Montreal, a nice Sunday afternoon outside. I mean, it's a great moment to be doing anything than Facebook live thing, but that's fine. I mean, uh, it's only one hour, so then I'm <laughs> going to go back to the pool after uh, this event. So thanks for having me today. It's a great uh, honor to be live with you and to talk about everything related to Flame or not, depending on how you feel today about the questions and all, all these. Yeah, I love, um, I love hanging out with you, Stefan, because um, all of our conversations are like an exercise in cyclical comedic ridiculousness. You know, That's we'll true. start off like talking about something legitimate, like, like uh, flame or, or like our families or something. And then one of us will throw something out of left field just to kind of throw the other one off uh, and then veer right back to the original conversation. So I've always appreciated <laughs> your sense of humor. And, uh, you know, let me ask, are you, like, wh what were you like as a kid? Were you the class, cl like class clown if they had such a thing? You know, were, yes, were you was, theatrical? Uh, like, well, in fact, uh, I was the, the guy in the back, you know, uh, imitating the teacher, bringing uh, comedy books and giving that away to my friends. So then, uh, like magazine, like uh, uh, comic magazine. So then, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I always like to entertain people. And I guess uh, that followed me till, till now. Right? Making people <laughs> laugh is good. It's a good way to interact with people. When you laugh, I mean, you enter somebody's zone and then you better communicate, better understand each other, and then we can get make great things. I, I've seen in software development, making people laugh is a great asset. Agreed. Agreed. So you've been with Autodesk for 22 years, is that correct? I joined in September 1997, so it's going to be 23 oh, years since September, Labor Day. Labor Day. So I started on Labor Day, so I started on an holiday, so this is the best way to start a job. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then, yeah, I'm still there, having fun doing software for for you guys and exploring technologies and uh, and, and mixing art and uh, technology together. And uh, what did you uh, when you started at? at uh, well, I guess it was Discrete Logic back then. What what was your role? How did you get in there? So I, a friend of mine, uh, which I, Bruno Munger, which I, I stood it with, uh, was working for Discrete Logic in the in the QA testing department for Fire, which was the editing products alongside Flame and Inferno. And he told me, well, you should come to join us. We need help. You need people like you to help do software. So then uh, I was working in post-production. I was happy with my job. I was happy with my customers. And I said, why not? So let's have a look and let's see how it is to work with a startup technology you know, company like Discrete Logic. And then I joined the Discrete team as a QA, uh, QA member. And some years after, I've become the team lead of the team. And some years after, I've become product designer. And from there, you know, I've, uh, I've worked with the team to create uh, great releases. Right, you were a, a subject matter expert the last time we met face to face, and now you're Absolutely. a product owner. Yeah. 
so in Autodesk, uh, the, the product designer team kind of evolved. So when I joined, the title was product specialist, meaning that we are the people knowing the software. Then we move as product designers, same job, in fact, definition, but a different title. Later, we became a user experience designer. Uh, and some years ago, we became subject matter experts. But at the end of the day, and then product owner, but at the end of the day, it's the same workflow, it's the same work is to translate into technology for the developers, the requirement of the products defined as defined by product management, uh, knowing the technology, knowing the, the third party application, knowing the competitors, knowing where the business should go. This is what we do every day, in fact, and talking with uh, customers like you and other beta sites. So to make the better, to, to make the best product out of uh, the requirements and then the ever changing technology. How long is the average development cycle? Uh, it, it, it kind of changed because uh, five or six years ago, if I'm not mistaken, we kind of changed the way we were developing software. So now a cycle is around three to five months, but some years ago it was like 18 months. And the problem with the 18 months is you are developing something that might not be usable or even answer the market needs when you deliver that you know, one year and a half after you start thinking about it. Now we deliver more often, as you've seen, the week before we release a 2021.1 update that is a continuity on the 2021 that we release in spring. And usually we release two, three updates a year that are separated by three months. So we kind of release every three months, four times a year. Is there anything um, you can think of or that you would name that is an example of something that didn't survive the 18 month cycle? Uh, you mean something we had to to get rid of after? Do, uh, no, like something it? that you did, like you, you you said that sometimes you know over the course of like a year and a half, something that you yeah. that was in development because it was very important, you know, at the at that moment. Um, by the time it actually comes to market, the 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 market has changed, the need has changed. Is there anything that? It, it never of. happened in our product line because we try to work with users and have early alpha testing and beta testing. But in, our, in other product line at Autodesk, I've seen some project that had to be canned because they were going in the direction that was wrong at the time that they planned to deliver it. So there was a big market change. Uh, some product have been canned because the, the market was not ready or the market was not there at the time of their release. That's sad. It happens in technology. People, sometimes they have to re-evaluate their technology need and then they will move on to something else, right? So we were quite lucky about that. It, that never happened. But uh, I understand that if that kind of thing might happen, that, that might be a big problem for, for a team or, or even a, a product line. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, any one feature of the, the dot one release that uh, you're you're especially proud of? Uh, that one release on my side is uh, really about uh, keeping up with formats. And it's also uh, adding the GPU acceleration for Sony RAW or XOCN on the Linux uh, products. And, and as we know, Sony Venice has been adopted a lot by advertising and long form uh, projects. So I'm quite happy that we are now able to decode that faster and don't have to cache content anymore if you are we're working with 4K and 6K. So we have better interaction. Uh, so that's a good one. Uh, if we were to look before that one, uh, the biggest thing that I'm proud of is the Dolby Vision capabilities we've added to the Flame products. Something mm -hmm. we had in Luster some years ago, but then our research two years ago were showing that more and more people wanted the capabilities in the Flame product. Because not only color, Dolby Vision, it's also mastering, it's also finishing, it's also managing all the version of editorial that might come because, you know, we can edit till the last minute of a project and even after deliverable, we can also edit uh, now, nowadays. So uh, we had to do a lot of research to ensure how can we keep the flame as we know and augment the capabilities and plug this technology into our tool set to extend and take advantage of the tool we've done in the past, like Connected Conform, like uh, Media IO, and so on. So that was a great, great product, great project that we, uh, we, we had the uh, opportunity to work with. Mm -hmm. And you said it took about two years or from the original collection of data like, to... Yeah, absolutely, yes. So research, validation, alpha, beta testing. We had good collaboration by many good sites around the world. They were able to test, even prototype, 
or even give feedback on PowerPoint presentation. Something quite difficult because when you validate concepts, PowerPoint is not something you can play with, uh, but that helped a lot designing uh, the end result. Gotcha. I want to ask you about connected conform in a minute, but uh, while we're still talking about third-party integrations, it seems like that's one of those aspects of flame development that's always, um, uh, you know, it's like a thankless job for you. You know, it seems like as soon as uh, you you implement either a new codec or support for a new a new camera or something like that, um, two days before you announce that support, uh, there's a new camera that came out or a new codec or something. Uh, do you ever find it frustrating that it seems like it's never enough? No. In fact, we, we work closely with all the vendors. So that way, I mean, we're sure that on their roadmap, we know what they plan to do, when they plan to release. So we have access to their SDK very early on, even in the alpha phase. So very often we can give feedback on the quality of the SDK. Uh, but yes, you're right. Sometimes there are new vendors coming with new cameras, new formats, and then uh, it's always tricky supporting a format because you don't know I mean, supporting an SDK means a lot of work uh, and how much the market will adopt this technology. So we don't want to code things for nothing. That's why sometimes it takes time before you see in the product support for some technologies, being camera, being acquisition card, being graphic card or whatever technologies, because we want to make sure that what we work on at the end makes sense for, uh, for, for, for the audience. I mean, we don't want to waste this development time on something that will not pop, right? Like, like VR. We talked about a lot about VR in the last years. And people were telling us, well, Flame has to be, you know, very good in VR. And we were remembering the stereoscopic 3D uh, buzz in 2009. That is kind of vanished, right? So we didn't want mm -hmm. to spend too much cycles on these things because at the end of the day, uh, if people don't use these features, well, that's going to be a waste. I remember, you have to maintain remember, uh, these things. Uh, right. Well, yeah, that's, uh, we, we talked to Will uh, you know, a few weeks ago, and uh, that, was, that was definitely uh, a theme that was, that was mentioned is that, you know, once you support something, I mean, when was the last time you, you, you dropped support for something in, in the software? I, I can't think of anything, you know, I mean, things are end of we life, will, you know, hardware is end of that. life, but like... Absolutely, some hardware because sometimes the vendors stop supporting with their SDK or operating system don't support. But you're right. I mean, we, I mean, it's known that there are a lot of workflows in our product, and we try to maintain them since you know many years. And uh, you're adding something, so then you have to validate these 15 ways to interact with the application and ensure that you're not breaking something that is important for some users in some markets, right? So that's quite difficult. Yeah, I and mean, I remember that's part of the job. Like I remember showing up at NAB one year and I was in the middle of like my first VR project. I was hating my life. I was hating all my choices that led me to that point. And, you know, there was a lot of buzz uh, with, with the dev team about like, you know, we have to have a stitching solution in flame. You know, like, I think, I think that was the time you had shown the, the 360 um, yep. options in the viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, yeah. and, you know, some of the feedback was like, that's great, but you know, I need this and this, and I want to be able to do this. And, you know, and I believe that was the last time I did a VR project. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Well, that's it. So we've done research, I mean, and we talked to a lot, lot, lot of people and what the, the main issue with uh, VR was not the technology, but more the how you make money out of it. Well, at the end, if you can't make money with a technology, well, you won't use the technology anymore because it doesn't make sense in your business. So that's why we, I mean, one of the difficult thing we have to sometimes do is to say no, to say no to technology or, or opportunities that at the end doesn't translate into reality. So that's yeah. difficult. Do you find, um, actually, we have a question. Let me throw this out at you here. This is from Charles. Charles wants to know, uh, with so much of the heavy lifting getting done by GPUs, why hasn't Autodesk allowed or enabled Flame to use external GPUs, I'm assuming on the Mac? Or on the Mac or on the Linux platform. Well, there are technology requirements to be able to get there that we're not there yet. Uh, we are looking at different things and that might or not happen in the future. But yeah, I mean, the Flame is, uh, the way Flame works right now would make that quite difficult. But there are technologies that uh, we are aware of that could help. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, these are, heavy infrastructure work that you need to do in phases to ensure that we, you, we don't break components of the applications because I mean, stability is the feature number one of the, of the product. I mean, you can have a, a super good keyer or uh, camera format support, but if it doesn't behave uh, the way it should, well, I mean, you're breaking the product. So we have right. to protect that. Do you find it um, uh, challenging to work with Apple? And I, I don't, Obviously, I'm not, I'm not prying to get you to say something controversial, but 
Um, like they just had their announcement uh, a couple of weeks ago that they're putting out their own silicon and 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 things like that. Do you find uh, it, is is it difficult as a software developer um, to manage outside forces like that? You know, when uh, someone decides to drop a platform or 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 decide they're not going to well, support it. Certain graphics These are card. challenges that we have to deal with with not only Apple but other vendors. We have graphic cards that might, you know, uh, be coming, and then you know, too late before the SDK is ready, there are announcements. Sometimes for business reason, the the partner might not have the time to tell us about the given technology that is available, and then we are asked, well, how do you plan? When do you plan to imp implement? technology A, B, or C. So yes, it's always challenging. We try to work very closely with all the vendors. Some are more secretive than others. Uh, but at the end, I mean, we are exposed to, uh, to what they do, their roadmaps, and we can take decision to see if it makes sense for us to be there or not, right? So it's not, uh, I mean, every vendor has its own particularities, challenges, but they, depending on the market they are, they are in. And uh, it's always, you know, a challenge, but you know, it's part of the, I mean, we want to, to, to use uh, cutting edge technology, so you have no choice. You have to be in the game or you're not, right? So, right. so we, have to be, we, have, we have to be there. Let me ask you about Connected Conform, and this is something that you've been working on for years. Right. Forever, yes. Yeah, forever. <laughs> was, well, because was, uh, uh, you, you've seen it in the product in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, but we thought about that in 2003. So we started thinking really? about these. Oh, absolutely. It's a very old thing that we wanted to do. And uh, for reason, for priority reason, we were not able to get there. And of course, we needed under hood technology that was available in anniversary edition. So you see, so we needed, so we had an idea. And then we had to wait some time about that. And we, we resurrected in 2014. And uh, it was funny because we were, uh, Philip, Francis, and myself, we were in LA doing some visit and validations, talking about new visual effects idea we had for finishing and all that. And then every big facilities where we were going were talking about the amount of VFX versioning they were having to manually replace in all their sequences, right? So people, and we see that on Logic or even on our internal forums, people ask for feature requests. They have, they want this format, they want this feature in the application, they want this button that would do something, but they rarely ask about workflows. So then we were faced to these people who all the 10 sites we visited were stuck with all these versions and, and had a difficult time to manage. So then we resurrected this connected conform ideas of linking together sequences and then we got the get-go and then we developed it in a way that is I feel quite interesting is instead of waiting many years to have a complete feature set we were able to release it in chunk to give you some some capabilities get feedback iterate on that and so on for uh, again the last what five years yeah mm -hmm. So that's interesting done? for users. Oh, it's not done. We have a lot of ideas that are not done. But yeah, I mean, uh, it will never be done. That's okay <laughs> because because I mean, we 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 we're getting feedback. We're getting uh, all changing requirements because the deliverable you were doing three years ago are different right now. So now you yeah, get sure. the social media, you get the formats. Uh, I mean, uh, it's okay. I mean, we want that. And every release, we keep some development time to adjust, modify or enhance the capabilities of Connected Conform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, the social media deliverables, you know, came just when you probably thought, well, just when we thought we figured this out. I mean, on your side and on my side, you know, yeah. this comes along um, and totally blows everything up. <laughs> yeah, and it's always, I mean, the deliverables are at the end and then, well, you, you, you are expected to deliver tons of things very fast. So that's a big challenge that we, again, we have also ideas about how we could connect more than the, the content, uh, than the sequences, probably uh, kind of connected deliverables. So you could you know, sync things. So we have a lot of ideas around the, around these connected teams. Cool. How big is the team that you work with? Uh, I don't have the exact count. I would say we are around what 30 people's ish. Mm -hmm. because there are, there are people in different departments. Uh, then you can extend to support, you can extend to sales, but yeah, it's roughly around that. It's a good size. I would say you cannot count. I mean, it, it doesn't mean because you have 60 people that you are better than a team of 30 people. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we see that in the past with some team that when they let go people, they became better because you get the synchronization of the various team. And it's not, again, the count, but more the type of people you work with. You have people who are fluent in different aspects of the application, so they can go back and forth in between, uh, between teams. They, can, uh, they have extended the competencies. So the, the ad count is not important. It's really how people are flexible enough to be able to uh, be uh, in, in, in different teams. So that's important. Question from uh, from David: How do the sizes of the Mac and Linux user bases compare? Oh, I don't have. This is more a question for Will. In fact, that is taking care of uh, the, the, this business. Uh, we've seen that new users coming for to, to, to the platform will, of course, adopt Mac because it's easier to get uh, to the platform. Uh, The ones who are looking for enterprise solution or massive collaboration will select Linux products. Mm -hmm. But yes, Linux requires a bit more technical. It's less less simple than a Mac. But when you integrated these, uh, I mean, competencies, well, you don't turn, I mean, you rarely go back to Mac after that. So it's really an entry level user base on the Mac and, and medium size facility on the Mac. And then the larger one, the enterprise level will be on Linux. Any big plans for archiving? Ah, archiving. Yes, we have a lot of ideas about archiving. Archiving is a great <laughs> thing that you need to have uh, working all the time because you never know when the customer will come back. But I feel that you know our, our closed way that we archive since you know the 20 last year I, I am with the company is something that should evolve should evolve into a more open format a to uh, a more um, a mix of uh, data media management and uh, being uh, managed into probably open standards of course you would ask well which open standards so there are some standards ev- uh, popping you know uh, and uh, we are looking at them. We are looking to see how these could fit. As you would imagine, changing archiving, because archiving is really tied to the data management of Flame. So that means the library structure and the archive is the same, right? So that means to change one, you need to change the other. So that means you need to revisit a lot of things in the application. So uh, having a risk. That's why this kind of uh, architectural project takes time. And uh, you need to be you know, a good seller to sell that kind of uh, of a, of a project because you know it's costly, so you need to marry that with other initiative. Maybe the cloud, maybe the openness of uh, of other workflows and products. So that's how you would sell it. Yeah, we had like a a, a, a very intense, almost like a, a, a spiritual level like conversation to work a few years ago um, about the difference between archiving and disaster recovery, like in a different, it was like, we had to, we had just implemented like a SAN and we had just implemented um, all kinds, it was, it was an opportunity to rethink kind of everything like workflow okay. wise. And uh, and yeah, it was, it was kind of transformative. We had always thought of archiving as like, you know, well, uh, I guess disaster recovery, you know, it was like in, in case, oh my God, either I delete something or like I lose, all the drives in my stone um, that I would be able to bring back what I worked on yesterday. And we weren't really thinking about it in terms of, you know, putting it on a shelf or putting it in storage in case three years from now the client comes back. But I imagine if you, I mean, or not even I imagine, I know once we started thinking about those two things differently, uh, it opened up all kinds of possibilities work for us. We weren't so tied into, you know. I totally agree. And very often today people do archive, but very often what they want to do is a backup. They want to back up yeah. their data. They want to ensure the metadata is uh, protected. If uh, and and they want, of course, having they want to have ways to get back in time to ensure that oh, the sequence I deleted two weeks ago, I need it back. How can I get that? So this is ar- archiving does that, but archiving relies on you know a, a more a more larger uh, data set that you might not need. For, for, for your daily backups, you don't need to archive all the media that you have, right? So sometimes mm-hmm. metadata would be enough. So yes, this is part of all the, the thing we're thinking about uh, for a, a future data management uh, project. Gotcha. What about um, the, the, uh, the effects tab and that whole workflow, bringing more of color into Flame? What was that conversation like back in the day? 
So I remember everybody. Uh, I mean, I remember, I distinctly remember being part of, you know, debates about like, I want luster in Flint. Like the minute that anniversary edition came out and there were tabs, you know, it was like at the bottom, I want a luster tab. <laughs> You know, uh, it was the same way that I wanted VR to, I want a stitching solution in flame, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, we always like said, uh, we, are, we always said, well, that color will not be, well, that tab will not be a luster tab. Uh, what you want is ways to navigate, ways to interact, ways to add, modify effects, but that goes beyond color. It's not only color. It's not luster. Work workflows in luster are close to what we have right now in the FX environment. So having a view on which you have your parameters and you can navigate from shot to shot and easily move things around. Something you had in luster since day one, but I mean, you, you want more than color. So the conversation happened, you know, I would say around 10 years ago, where we, we, know, we knew that we wanted to move more and more luster technology in the flame product. It was clear that every, every manufacturer was looking at having in a single product all capabilities. And that makes sense at the end of the day. You want to be able to conform, uh, to finish, to grade, to FX, uh, work with a multiple version, uh, like connected conform, uh, within the same environment. So there's, there's the, best, uh, the best interchange that you have is between two Flame products, right? So if you can have your conform in a Flame Assist, Flare doing batch work, and a couple of Flame doing color, doing doing effects, doing finishing, well, this is great because, I mean, the, you don't have to translate data. You don't, la don't have to move media around. So that makes sense. So then we, the design, the design team sat down and looked at different scenarios, uh, a lot of scenarios on, on how we could do that. And, of course, you would imagine the amount of capabilities that we listed as being requirements for a V1, V2, V3, V4. Uh, and, and like connected conform and like other features, we gave you know, a, a, a tool set that is evolving at every release. Then came machine learning, then came other capabilities that are inside, you know, the same environment. So that's great. Do you ever find it like a, a difficult, uh, you know, you, may, you brought up machine learning. These things are very sexy, you know, like they're very, they're very topical and sometimes things like archiving and underlying media management, not so sexy. Do you ever find oh. it difficult? Well, I mean, except of no, course no, no, to no. people uh, like you uh, and me, you know, and, okay, and, the, so. uh, and, the, and the fine collection of people who are, are uh, on the webinar with us. Um, do you ever find it difficult though? I mean, is there ever a battle for, for resources or, or uh, maybe just anything like that when you're going oh, up against fact, something like machine learning? Well, there are there are times that you get uh, industry pushed toward the, the direction where you have to invest. Uh, but I mean, the low level infrastructure wall of the application, it, it has to work, it has to be developed, it has to evolve. Uh, and I I'll, always I'll, I'll, I'll say to people when we discuss with with uh, customers and the other designers or product owners that I'm always taking care of the the boring stuff, so the conform, the IOs. I mean, and, and, and this is the kind of tools that you don't want to see. You interact with every day, but you don't want to know that they do exist, right? They are there, they work as they ex you expect them to work to let the place for other capabilities like conform, uh, like, like, like FX environment, like uh, machine learning or action capabilities, right? So these are the tools that will make Flame shine. The, the, the back end things has to be invisible has to work it is developed and but yeah you don't want to think about that so we know we don't we don't fight we don't fight for a resource in this area uh, we have the resource we need to to bring them where we want them to be but uh, i mean it, it's equally you know uh, founded uh, when we uh, deliver uh, versions i know what you mean and, and i mean this in the in the in the most loving possible way you don't appreciate plumbing until it doesn't work you know what i mean when it leaks i mean uh, you know it exists <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Um, another thing on the list here was, was, uh, was caching. There hasn't been an update to caching in Flame in a while. Yes. Why not? What are you looking for? You want foreground <laughs> caching? You want to, uh, you want, well, 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 in fact, caching means a lot of things. So there's the media caching, there's the batch caching cache. There are a lot of things. There's also machine learning caching. So there are a lot of things. So is there something particular you want to talk about or? No, I, uh, I like me, me personally, I've just like, yeah. uh, I've jumped fully into using the machine learning tools in the last okay, I see. three weeks. And uh, it was, I, I began to read that 
I began to realize that now there's another aspect of caching that I need to uh, be aware of in my life. Um, I guess, you know, I've always uh, been an advocate for um, everything in the background as much as possible. Like, and by that, I mean, let's not waste a clock cycle. If for some reason, you know, uh, I'm not doing something, then there should be a queue that's doing whatever. And then if it's not needed, throw it out. That's fine. Okay. So can I have that please? So we, we have this idea of uh, idle rendering that when you do nothing, something happens. Uh, it's complicated because uh, we have to make sure that we are not blocking you from doing something. So you have a pause because you're talking with the director in the suite and, and then you want to go back. So when you pause working with the application, it should be intelligent enough to understand what you want to be rendered or cached uh, uh, based on the last thing you've touched, right? So then mm -hmm. there's one thing. Uh, second thing is, uh, like I said, you, you want to make sure that when you get back to the application, you don't, you don't want to feel it. You want to feel the flame as being available for you because you decide to right. use it. These are not simple. So these are things that we have in mind also, uh, but they, yeah, they take some, uh, some, some thinking to make sure that they are not, they shouldn't be, that should be invisible. So you should not feel it. You should feel that everything you need is rendered. Uh, so that's, that's one way to do it. There's also other places in the application we can improve the performance, in which case you would not need caching because the software would just be faster. So, so there, are, there are many ways to fix these things, right? New technologies, the new hardware that you'll see next in the next years will probably help us to get to these kind of workflows. Like, like what, for instance? Well, new, new, new boards, new, uh, new CPU, new GPUs, uh, distributed technology. We might also probably think about uh, remote and cloud. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So these might probably uh, help people. Uh, define the power they need. Today you have a workstation, it has a, a, a given set of capabilities. Well, uh, I mean, w when you externalize the technology, the hardware, you, you might have ways to do things differently. Or Before not. we get into that, uh, I wanted to ask you about a little bit uh, about uh, how the, the lockdown has been for you, the working from home. I mean, obviously you're, you're you know, you're outside more, you're getting fresh air and sunshine. Uh, the little dappled lighting rig that you've hooked up for yourself is uh, really very, very well done. I obviously your time you spend in film school was not wasted. And uh, I mean, people keep going in and out of the trunk shop there behind you. I, I, uh, I imagine it's a very popular place, but how- It's a, how, great, how, it's a great shop. Yes, totally. Shop local. How, um, how has the working from home and working remotely affected you uh, and your team? So we have a uh, mini team at Autodesk working from home. So like the shotgun people from, from, the, from, the, from, from day one, I mean, they were distributed. They were guys and girls around the world in the London, Los Angeles, New York, Montreal. Uh, and uh, they spend a good chunk of time on Zoom and use Slack. And, uh, and the Flame team is co-located. So that means the whole team is in Montreal. In the past, we had offices in, in different places of the world, but in the last year, everybody is co-located and we work at the office. So we come in the morning, we commute, we come in the morning, get the drink, uh, and then we have our meetings. So we don't use Slack, we don't use Zoom because we don't need it because we're working. But mid-March, everything changed. So mid-March, uh, so Friday the 13th, I mean, uh, we had the <laughs> feeling that we would not come back on the, the Monday and uh, we brought some equipment home and then on the Sunday, we were told, well, now you're going to be working from home and make it work. So uh, we said, okay, good. So we kind of planned and quite quickly, the team really well adapted to work from home. And I would say that two weeks after, so beginning of April, we kind of realized what it meant. So a part of not seeing our friends, because our colleagues are our friends, right? And we have very good coffee at the office. But a part of that, <laughs> I mean, uh, we integrated quickly Zoom, Slack. We were able to do our daily meetings, sync up meetings, develop with uh, remote technology, so RGS, or even bringing uh, hardware at home. And I would say for now, I like it. 
it's fun. I mean, uh, you don't have to, you don't waste commuting. So then you're, way, you, you, you're gaining time because commuting might mean one hour or two hours a day, multiplying that by five and then by four weeks a month. And then, man, you have a lot of time. So uh, we were finalizing 2021 release. So we were ready to go to NAB to present our things. We were working with Dolby to have a public demonstration of the Dolby vision at their booth. And then, of course, the show vanished, uh, sadly. And, of course, not being able to meet you guys at NAB is quite sad. But, uh, I mean, in, in retrospect, I would say that the team really w was really well uh, really well adapted. We released 2021, and then we planned 2021 update for June, and we were able to release on time without removing features. So working from home works for us. Uh, and then, well, we've seen our customers at the beginning struggling and trying to find ways to access remotely their station. So we were able to work with Teradici, work with uh, HP. So then we were getting fixes or capabilities. And I think that working from home is something that will stay. Even if uh, people get back to the office, we might get back to the office someday a week for some in our case, for some work related to hardware that might be difficult to move. But I, I, I foresee that in the creative world, a lot of creative will want to stay home and not have to uh, go you know, commute. If you think about London, I mean, we know a lot of people in London that uh, they live far from the city. So why would you want to you know, waste two hours a day? Of course, at the back end... Uh, good coffee but i mean you, th that can be fixed uh so uh the back end will have to adapt people will have to adjust uh, uh with their customers uh, the security requirements but i mean everything is there i mean uh, it's not impossible to do but i think it's definitely one thing that this showed that the you know, we all scrambled to shut down so quickly that i think we proved that we could do it and uh and a lot of the stigma that was uh that was kind of hanging over the whole notion of doing visual effects work or the kind of work that we do at home, you know, was quickly, you know, rendered pointless. But I, I'm wondering um, the experience of, of uh, you know, we, you, we talked a few minutes ago about, you know, adapting to the needs of, of your customers and needs in the market. Has, has the, the whole notion of remote workflow um, taken on a higher priority with flame development now that we're all doing uh, it? Uh, COVID-19 did not, in fact, made that more higher in the list. It was already high on the list before that. Uh, we've shown uh, we've shown at NEB 2017 in our tech suite, I think, 2017, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Teradici access, you know, remote access. Uh, we had customer using it uh, from West Coast to, to, to uh, West Coast, East Coast to West Coast without issues, without seeing, you know, any latency so that is on our mindset since many things uh, collaborating between multiple seats in facility like we can do uh, over the, 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 the Autodesk network is something we do since a lot of time so the remote access always been in our mindset and on our, our radar it just that it continues because now we have people that are ready to make the jump before COVID, people were talking about that, were trying to find business models that were making sense, but now they have the opportunity to do it. And they have the, they have people, access to people who are, so the vendors, the artists, the technical people are eager to do it. Yeah. Whereas before COVID-19, I mean, why change something that works? Mm -hmm. Well, now you have to change it because you, have, you need to adapt. You need to be able to satisfy your customer requirements and they won't be lower. I mean, there's just, just going to be higher requirements. It's yeah, I think uh, everybody was, uh, was, 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 was accommodating when we were all scrambling, yeah. even on the customer or the client side, to figure out yeah. how we're going to do this. And, uh, you know, some people had really buttoned up solutions. Others had, you know, kind of just things they threw together. You know, they figured it out as they went along and made it work. Absolutely. And I think yes. now you're, you're totally seeing the um, almost like the, the legitimization of those solutions. You know, people are having to really like solidify any uh, security issues or uh, redundancy issues. A couple of questions for you, my friend. First is from Brooks. All right. It says here, Brooks says here, Flame uh, used to be a product where it was hard to get media out as a middleman because it was where you finished but it has gotten so much better as a middleman now. Thank you for that. 
Yep. Uh, now with the effects tab, it seems uh, I'm being asked to color and do effects together more, but still hand off the files. Any thoughts on looking into a workflow where it's easier to apply color and effects and export them onto the original size of the media? Uh, our friend Jeff Kyle, which is on uh, the, the chat, I've seen him some time ago, also had that kind of, uh, I just, so I also had that <laughs> question some, some times ago. We kind of work some workflows because of the con conform. You are able to update not only the segments of sequences, but also the content of your source in your reel. So there are ways you can do that. They are not super efficient, you can make them work. There are some challenges. So, but that's part of the, uh, the kind of uh, connected delivery because yes, we are asked to deliver uh, finished content in many ways. So being a complete sequence or being affected sources at their original rate and resolutions. So that, these are part of our big list of things we'd like to have a look at because uh, most and most pr pr production houses want to have access to the content you modified so they can uh, re repurpose the content later, right? So they, want, they, don't want, they want to be independent. Uh, so that means you need to share the assets with them. So that posed some, some uh, you know, uh, ethics question. So what do you have to provide as far as uh, content to your customers, your IP, where, where your IP is? But I would say for media and effects, should be able to, to share that with, the, with your customers. Setups, 3D, uh, 3D uh, shapes or whatever, do you want to share that? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, uh, we, we have that on our, on our to-do list, being able to deliver content in ways that it can be repurposed, being finished or being in progress. Uh. Another question from, uh, from Joe Jinder. Talking about third-party integration, when can we expect Flame to get more robust and infused with tools like Element 3D and 2D character animator and an enhanced particle system. He's hoping that more tools like this will make flame shine. Is the question related to work with third party developers and, and include their technology in our products? Is, is it what I'm hearing? Is it the request? Or because you said particles, we do have a particle system that is aged, but uh, there are technology available that could be licensed, I guess. So it's, it, it depends uh, of your requirements, what you expect from this technology. OFX, I'm seeing, uh, could be a way. Uh, that would mean uh, probably have the OFX technology in our 3D environment to have you know, a more robust, a more robust mm -hmm. workflows. These are things that uh, you know, we, we talked about. Uh, they're not simple because not all third parties have their technology on all the operating system we support. Uh, there's, there's integration. So when you integrate third party technology in your code base, there are challenges. They are, I mean, they have to be rock solid. So because you don't want Flame to crash because a third party implemented technology is not behaving like it should. There's memory management, the graphical memory and the RAM memory. So you want to ensure that you don't need uh, 1,000 uh, gigafram on your system to make sure everything is working as expected, because that's going to be a high, 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 high cost. So yeah, I mean, there are a lot of challenges. But uh, I mean, that's interesting. So I mean, again, again I would invite you to uh, propose these on Flame Feedback. Flame Feedback is a great place to uh, send your ideas. And uh, there's also a great connection with all the users who can have a look at your request and comment. I mean, more data you give us as far as idea of workflow and better, we can discuss that internally, but also have the conversation with users that might say, well, do that or please don't because A, B or C. So that's interesting. We want to have this exchange with the, the, the people. Mm -hmm. That's important. Yeah, yeah my, favorite, um, my favorite posting of, uh, of, I guess, of the the quarter or you know, what comes out three times a year. After every release, my favorite posting is the list of all the things that were included in that release that were part of Flame Feedback. So, so uh, okay, especially, I mean, uh, especially when they include mine. But, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, it, it, I, I can't stress that enough. If someone has an idea or a suggestion, something that they want, absolutely submit it. Uh, to flame feedback and encourage others to upvote it. That's how it gets higher on the list. You know. Yes, and and yeah, absolutely. I invite you to, you know, put your request, but also visit the request already logged. Go there and see what people were asking for, because somebody might be asking for something that makes no sense. And because of A, B, and C, like I said, and then we want to have the conversation between users. 
I mean, we're doing a flame for you guys. We want, we need your help to be able to shape it in a way that it makes sense and can evolve in the future. Uh, and uh, you might have ideas that we haven't think about or connectivity between tools that we haven't think about. Flame is, is about that. Is the, many people are hacking the tools to do something that we haven't think about. So, I mean, uh, Please uh, go there, vote, uh, upvote, and uh, give the feedback. But, but again, more information we have about the workflows or challenges you have, and better we can shape the product to fit it. And like I said before, for connected conform, nobody asked us for connected conform. They were asking us A, B, or C, or D, but then you take all these requests, and then you say, well, at the end, what users want to do is, is these things, these things that can be probably repurposed in the application to do something like you know, connected conform, machine learning, or whatever. So yeah, I mean, the, the exchange with the customer base is super important. Question from Yuri. Are there any plans for camera tracking improvements? Of course. I imagine there are lots of plans. Yeah, camera tracker is super important. Uh, it, uh, it's in the plan. We are looking at various things that you might see uh, in the future. Um, I'm not able to tell you more about that right now, but uh, stay tuned. We might tell you things. Or not. <laughs> and yes, uh, there are plans to execute the plan to answer <laughs> Quinn's question on the chat. I mean, deliciously. you would imagine how you would imagine how long the list of things to do is, right? I mean, we have people doing advertising, film, animation, and everybody has a big list of things that they want to have uh, to, to see uh, in Flame. And yes, it's always difficult to pick and choose and build coherent uh, release plan that is sometimes, you know, focus on some uh, on, on some aspect of the product. But sometimes we need to, you know, to, to give things to different uh, kind of workflows. So it's always difficult. We'd like to, you know, do tons of features, but sometimes, you know, it's better to do less uh, and ensure that, you know, quality is there and... Uh, when you, uh, when you were explaining, uh, you know, how, yes, there may be certain things that maybe we can tell you in the future. That's when the, uh, the background behind you started playing in reverse. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> it was very well timed. Um, do you have any, uh, what, what's the, if, if you can share it, what's like the, the, the one thing that you're excited about in terms of new technologies or capabilities, one thing that, uh, you think Flame could really benefit from? Uh, but not really specific on a given technology, but the whole collaboration, the whole collaboration, collaborative workflows with users doing things and being able to synchronize other member of the team, which they could derive their work and connect that to something else. Uh, I mean, a more holistic uh, approach to connected conform, but not mm -hmm. only conform related, but more application workflow related, right? Where uh, one could, uh, a team could take decision, distribute work, synchronize uh, uh, different uh, local or remote artists or artists using other application and then having Flame as being the the master location where everything goes with Sounds ability little... to communicate, to link, to uh, uh, lock, to, uh, again, I mean, it's a, it's a collaboration with a big C. Sounds a little toxic if, if you don't mind me dropping the, the T word. You're right. I mean, uh, some of you might remember Toxic, something we developed uh, at the beginning, well, at the end of the 90s, at the beginning of the 2000s. And uh, it was that. It was uh, media collaboration mm -hmm. before people thought they had this need. Mm -hmm. so Toxic was a bit, you know, it was there before the need. And that's sometimes very bad in technology. If you, if you, if you don't, if you have technology that people don't realize they need, well, they won't use it. And then the work you've done is, uh, is wasted until some years after you realize, well, I needed that technology, but it doesn't exist anymore. So that's sad. So people sometimes have, have hard time realizing when they see a functionality, a feature, or a workflow that they need this, because right now they don't. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to, see the, to, to predict the future. It's difficult to put yourself in a workflow that you never explored. It's when you need it that you realize that uh, 
that, oh, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Quinn has a question for you. It's uh, if you could set the agenda, what feature or features would you like to prioritize? Uh, well, supporting newer media formats is quite high in my list because if you want to finish, you have to start. So you need to be able to support the formats. But first, I would probably, if I had the power, I would probably talk with the different camera vendors and tell them, well, guys, uh, inventing a format every six months or a year is not a great idea. So we should probably find a, we should probably find a format that suits everybody format that would probably also have a great way to insert metadata, capture raw, and then uh, make that open source mm -hmm. instead of having 55 formats. Uh, <laughs> is that all? The value, the value is, it, well, it's low. The value is in the camera, not on the, the, the medium on which you record. So, I mean, create great acquisition device and make mm -hmm. them record to a format that everybody can read and we don't have to, and it's powerful. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a no data loss and all that. It's written metadata. So that would be, of course it won't happen because every vendor has its uh, priorities and as they will lock you in their workflow. But of course, that's it. Uh, second is really, like I said, the collaboration aspect of uh, using products and not only our products, but also third party products to ensure that uh, I mean, we know we're not alone in pipelines, so we have to open sometime our kimono and ensure that you can, you know, uh, take, take, take the BLG, the baseline BLG approach, mm -hmm. right? I mean, being able to compute the data of another third-party application without having to render grades for, I mean, terabytes, and then we conform and then back and forth. So you, that you don't want. You want to actually emit the data and have the bed products to compute the data of uh, the different applications. So I think this is uh, important, but I might be alone. I don't know. No, I, I think you're hundred percent on, you know, spot on. And even in the chat, you're getting a lot of applause okay, good. for that, my friend. Thank you. I think uh, if, if, if you ever do decide to write a memoir or, you know, a autobiography, you should call it. If you want to finish, you have to start. I think that's perfect. I like that. It's very deep. Do I have to, do I have to pay you royalties on that or? Oh, no, 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 never, no? never. This okay, is open okay. source, it's open source, that's fine. Open source, very yes, good. Open absolutely. source is good. I mean, uh, there are great ideas. There are a lot of people who found solution to problems and uh, they just need to ensure that people collaborate with them to advance these formats. So, I mean, I'm all for it. Yep, I think if we can get one camera format, uh, one color space, you know, and, 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 and anything else, please. You wanna talk about something, we, a mess we made for ourselves. Ugh. Well, does anybody have any other questions for Stefan? I don't want to take away any more of his, his days. Obviously, before the sun sets, you know, or, or moves at all. Um, well, you know, I put some screens. So I'm fine. I'm not going to be red, you know, at the end of the meeting. So that's good. Perfect. <laughs> does it, does it, me, and meanwhile, I'm here in this, in this void, <laughs> this formless yeah. void, which is actually a very nice guest room. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any other questions for Stefan? All right. Well, thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate you taking the time. I thank you very much. I mean, uh, we are on Logic, so the whole team is on Logic. So we see your post, guys. So sometimes we don't answer because we feel that sometimes uh, the community is great. The community answers, and we see uh, great, great collaboration, great exchange, great sharing of knowledge. This is fantastic. Uh, my uh, my wish, if I had some wishes uh, to is, is uh, ensure to go to Flame Feedback, put your request, uh, and ensure we are aware not only of what you need, but we we and, and very often people tend to give solution and, and not problems. So tell us what doesn't work. Tell us what you need to achieve. Don't tell me go add this button in this menu for a. I mean no. Uh, we want to be able to work with you to understand problems, to solve them, uh, and have the community also interact with the other users and try to come up with ideas to solve these problems. Or have you think about that and have this conversation? Uh, so Flame Feedback uh, is a great place to do that. Logic also, I mean, uh, this is great. Uh, my last thing would be, 
when we publish a release like the update one, take the 15 minutes to go through the what's new. There's a great, great secret that we hide there. It's a small <laughs> document that you need to read. We, I mean, it's not a user manual with 5,000 pages. It's really 15, 10 pages that tells you what we fixed, what we broke, and what we've added to the product. We add more and we fix more than we break, but sometimes, you know, sometimes we uh, want to tell you what we've done. That will solve a lot of problems because I've seen too many people upgrading to the new release, not knowing the content, not knowing the changes, and then feel problem when they have to deliver something because they don't know what they were using what they were working with. And that's bad. You need to master the craft. You need to ensure that the software you work with, you're confident to you can operate it. And sometimes we have to change things in the application. So please, what's new should be your first thing you read before you install the software. Go through the menus, go through the, the, the tabs with the new addition and, uh, and have fun. Couldn't agree more, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the beautiful day. And Thank uh, you very much, guys. Uh, say hello to everybody at the trunk shop for us, please. Absolutely. Be safe. I mean, we know we, I mean, this is, these are difficult times in some part of the world. It's more difficult than others. Uh, we're going to go over that. That's for sure. Adaptation is uh, something that everybody needs. We need to adapt. A human being adapted for the you know, last million years or beyond. And uh, so it, it's sometimes rough, but uh, we need to stay positive work together, sometimes push aside the politics and think about we are human being and we can collaborate. And these would be my wise words for this uh, Sunday afternoon. I love it. I love it, Stefan. Thank you very much, man. Thank you and uh, see you on Logic. We'll see you on Logic. Let me just uh, share my screen here and we'll close this out. All right. Coming up on Logic Live next week, we have uh, the Sausage King of Chicago. No, not Abe Froman, but Brian Higgins himself, creative director from Flavor. Definitely looking forward to that. In fact, I'm going to put in the chat right now uh, links, Zoom links, so you can register for uh, the upcoming sessions. That's going to be followed by Andy Davis on July 19th, who's got some amazing stuff planned. Super excited for this. Uh, game in, using uh, game engine tools to enhance your VFX work. That's followed by, uh, by uh, uh, Naveen Srivastava uh, from Toronto on July 26th. Autodesk, Autodesk's own Fred Warren will join us on August 2nd, followed by Randy McEntee on August 9th. And on August 16th, using Flame with Shotgun in production. And that was based on some feedback. If anybody has any suggestions for future episodes of Logic Live, please let me know. And... Coming hopefully this week, uh, I'm going to have the first episode of a new Logic podcast for everybody to check out. Very much excited for that. Looking forward to that. Uh, you can find all kinds of great content, including past episodes of Logic live on logic.tv. And uh, Joe Jinder, you'd asked about the um, feedback form. You can find a link to that on logic.tv under links. Please take a minute if you haven't already and subscribe to our uh, YouTube feed. And again, we want to thank our friends at AJA for sponsoring Logic Live. We're very excited to have them on board, as well as Synesis Oceana. Thank you for your continued support, solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. Find out all about them at synesis.io. That's gonna do it for this week, everybody. I'll see you next time.